Greetings, my dark warriors, my denizens of the night. Welcome to episode 666, the podcast of the beast. This is the Player One podcast for Tuesday, August 13th, in the year of our Dark Lord, 2019. I, of course, am your host for the evening, the almighty Satan himself, risen from the underworld, from my pits of eternal flame and torment, to bid hello and welcome to your lowly human mortal hosts of this devilishly exciting show. You talk too much. I'm the devil. <laughs> I'm allowed to talk however the hell much I like. Oh, there it is. You see? Yeah, huh? Heaven forbid. <laughs> I keep my mouth shut even for a moment. You see what I did there, heaven? I hate sure. those guys. Those guys are douchebags. <laughs> I am the devil, and I love being <laughs> devilish and evil. With the length of this intro, no one's going to be able to figure out which one of us did it. it <laughs> yeah, they will. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who did it? Who did it, of course, was Who, me. Whoever smelt it, dealt it. Old Scratch himself, <laughs> with a heart as dark as pitch. That, that voice you hear. Hi. That's the one. <laughs> that is my whorish minion. <laughs> the only podcast host who would dare subject his own mother to the devil's music. <laughs> Christopher C.J. Johnston. Well, hello, Satan. Yes, I did listen to a lot of heavy metal back in the day. A lot of with your mom. albums with uh, with yes. my mom, yeah, of course, and a lot of yes. albums with explicit lyrics uh, tags, yes. Yeah, of course you did. Uh, you love the devil's music. <laughs> That's what they the say. The gyrating beats give you lascivious thoughts <laughs> that permeate <laughs> your most innocent of times. Do you know? Do you know what the initial CJ stands for? What? No. Crucify Jesus. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> my favorite my favorite thing that has ever happened. <laughs> Cause that guy was a jerk. Okay. <laughs> CJ, of course, joining us from the great state of Washington. Oh, also thank you. joining thank you. us. From the great state of Washington and curiously and uncharacteristically quiet <laughs> during this intro <laughs> is another another uh, minion of, of the damned the beast. Yeah. Another cloven hooved <laughs> servant of mine. <laughs> what's, Washington what's, states up what? What's cloven? His hooves. Oh, sorry. He's, yeah, he is a he's a, he's half goat. That's why he never stands up during the video. You think it's because he's not wearing pants, but it's because he doesn't want you to see his goat legs. He's got hooves. Hooves. <laughs> I refer, of course, to Filthy Abald. Hello there, Satan. Thank you. <laughs> it's great to be here. I. I, yeah. I was supposed to, you know what? I had uh, a youth group tonight <laughs> mm. <laughs> at at my local church, but when I heard you were going to be here, I I figured I I better show up. That's right. That was a smart move on your part. <laughs> <laughs> the only person who's going to be in yeah. hell is whoever has to edit this. Me. That, that, That's, that, that is crucified Jesus himself. <laughs> Losing listeners by the second here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, Lord. maybe that is uh, Satan's plan for this yes, podcast. It is. I Bring want it to <laughs> down from the inside. I want to send this podcast to the to the 
tenth level of hell. And hey! Joining us all the way from the Great White North, which is of course the polar opposite of the fiery red depths of hell, is Canada's own Greg Seward. Hello, Satan. Hello, Greg. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm great. <laughs> are you? <laughs> yeah. Are you loving evil? Uh, always. You murder any goats today? <laughs> no, not today. Well, not today. step oh. it up. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's, well. How, that's how much you guys paid me to be here, so I'm just gonna... <laughs> gonna go away, okay. I'm that is the worst away. hundred bucks we ever spent. Yeah, you and this what? is weird. I mean, we're not streaming this episode, but the video here is just frightening behind you seeing all of the people being tortured and well, various fires hellfire you'd be amazed at, at how much boiling mercury you can cram into a fellow's anus <laughs> but it's a lot it's a lot let me tell you you can hear their screams in the background i'm sure yes. you know what they sound just like cj <laughs> i, I think know i what? have an idea <laughs> I prefer to buy everything in store if I can. It's just easier. <laughs> no, no, no. That's, yeah. No, that's the special. That's, that's, you're hearing that sound uh, from another level of hell where we keep uh, video game developers who sell loot boxes. Oh. Oh, oh. timely <laughs> industry commentary from our dark lord himself. No, no, uh, a fellow getting boiling mercury. Uh, poured into his anus sounds a lot like a screaming pregnant lady. Oh, it does. You mean it like it does? Uh, oh. <laughs> That's, there it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Screams of my amusement. Oh. And apparently give birth anyway. Uh, apparently, yeah. Sometimes things slip out during the process. <laughs> Literally. We yeah. know how that can be. It happens oh, to all of us. <clears throat> so, it's true. Well, I'm uh, good, I'm, Satan, I'm, thank you very much for joining us. Wow, wow, CJ is playing Satan off. I'm I'm not kicking you out because you're gonna you're gonna count us down here. What we're doing oh, in this yeah. episode, we're gonna go down a list of hey hey 13, CJ yeah it's me Phil hey Phil it's me Phil so don't put the effect on me right now. <laughs> Um, <laughs> You're breaking the fourth wall. <laughs> what? <laughs> well, edit that part. Edit that part out. Hey, I'm I'm very excited about Satan being here. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm just breaking in to remind everyone that I'm on this podcast too. Oh, there we go. That's yeah. Good. What? How how are we doing this show? Well, let me tell you, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna count down thirteen. Oh, an unlucky number. It's me, the devil. In indeed, yes. Uh, thirteen. <laughs> Uh, spooktacular, scarific <laughs> video games. <laughs> You're getting a, getting a little less Satan, satanic, oh. and more Halloween. More okay, yeah. yeah you're you're right. Uh, okay. dev- devilish fun. There you uh, go. Will scare you to death. Oh, wait. I just changed my voice there. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's so. That's the plan. We're gonna do thirteen and. Uh, I think we'll uh, we'll kick it off, uh, Satan. If you will uh, tell us what number oh. we are on here. Oh, we are on. You know, <laughs> let me tell you. If it's not number oh six, oh six, six, oh, every number's gonna get a routine. Every <laughs> number's gonna get a bit. <laughs> okay. If it's not six, 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 it's gotta be thirteen. Unlucky thirteen. Very unlucky. In this case, yes. CJ, what is our 13th game? It is Haunting starring Poltergeist. <laughs> because of course it is, right? Of course. We can't, we can't not talk can't, about... Can't not have a podcast without about scary games. games and not talk about Haunting starring Poltergeist, right? Starring the undead. Starring the yeah. undead. Well, he's, yeah, Poltergeist. I, I mean, he's, no, he's never really undead. He's, he's a ghost. He's not really he's undead. He, no, he is dead. I mean, he's yeah, a ghost, he, yes, but, but he, un, he did die. Un, undead typically refers to like the the living dead that walk among us, like zombies, right? That's right. Yes. Poltergeist is a poltergeist. Poltergeist, which, which is a subset of ghosts, which are uh. not. They are not living again. They are still dead. 
I yes. You know, they're not the dead right. come back to life. Uh huh. No, he is last fifteen real. minutes has been excruciating. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna get. We're gonna have to split this episode into two episodes, really. <coughs> six, six, seven, right <laughs> next door to the beast. The revenge <laughs> of the beast. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Would that be across the street from the beast? Mm, probably. Kitty corner. <laughs> Kitty corner to the beast. <laughs> All of us beasts live in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> Cul-de-sac so the, of the beast. Yeah. A cul-de-sac of the it's beast. It's safe for the kids to ride their bikes around <laughs> in there. It's pretty nice, actually. Cul-de-sac of hell. Pretty nice. So, yeah, uh, Poltergeist. Traffic circle of hell. Yeah, he tell us about ghost. Tell us about Poltergeist. Did you, you played this game back in the Genesis I did. Days? So, so, I worked at Babbage's at the time that this game came out. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think it's, it's a Babbage. Babbage. And mm-hmm. uh, we had this program where employees could check, check out games. Right. And then we bring them back and, and then we sell them as new. Them as new. <laughs> and sell and them, sell them as new. new. That's right. So, uh, Haunting and, starring Poltergeist. Call me evil. <laughs> Haunting starring Poltergeist <laughs> is not one of the uh, the games that I purchased. Uh, I instead right, right. checked it out uh, several times from, right. uh, from Babbage's. So. Free rental. Free. Several, to- several times. Several too, times. Huh? Yeah. Did you, did you I finish it? That. I did not finish it. No. Okay. You no. liked it enough to <clears throat> to continue scamming customers, but not enough that you would buy it. That's right. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, it got a good review back. Uh, got good reviews. Yeah? I think. <laughs> sure, <laughs> what did, why not? What did, what did it get in EGM? I have no idea. No, I don't. You know, you know what I bet I got? What? I think Ed gave it a six. <laughs> Martin, the rest sevens. Martin gave it a six. Uh-huh. Oh, and, oh I uh, see a sushi, pattern. Sushi X. Uh, he gave it an eight point five. He really liked it. <laughs> of course, so. of course. So Poltergeist uh, mm-hmm. is a, a teenager that died in a uh, roll in, in a uh, skateboarding accident, not roller skating, <laughs> right? Because it was the <laughs> roller skating accident. Say, roller skating oh. accident. You know, they <clears throat> they they should have had him die in a skitchin accident, and it could have been, been that would have been the, great. The EA cinematic universe. Well, this is sort of a. A universe of the game designers because the uh, two of the guys that uh, previously worked on 720 degrees oh. uh, designed this game, Haunting Star and Poltergeist. And uh, one of the producers was uh, he worked on Skate or Die as well. So, <laughs> so we know which option Poltergeist chose. So maybe this is a spin off on Skate or Die or uh, 720 degrees, either one. That's pretty great. Yes, indeed. So you you play as Poltergeist who comes back and he is taking revenge on the Sardini family. The Sardini, uh, the, the patriarch of the family, the the dad runs the company that made Candy the Sardini. skateboards that uh, that Poltergeist got killed on. So there's a whole backstory there. So wait, hey. were the were the skateboards faulty? They were apparently well, defective, che- cheaply made defective skateboards. Oh, yes, man, that's the, that's the story. That's hate cheaper word. made skateboards. I know, especially if you're going to go skitching on them. Maybe skitching is is yeah, actually I, in. But the, you know, skitching was with rollerblades. The yeah. Poltergeiverse. Yeah, only Marty wow. McFly skitches with a skateboard. Yeah, true. But so yeah, in this game, if you have never played it, you you play as Poltergeist, mm-hmm. and you go around haunting the Sardini family. Uh, through various scenarios to try to get them to leave the house. And the win condition on each level is getting them to run out of the house. Okay. Uh, so to do so, you possess various items in the house. And there's actually like a lot. You can apparently possess over 400 things in the house. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and they all had like kind of specialized animations, right? They all have specialized animations. Yeah, that was part of the the selling point of the game yeah. was that uh they all had like custom really cool looking animations. Yeah. Um but if uh if your ectoplasm level got too low or ran out, mm-hmm. uh you died. You ah. you died again and you went to a different uh realm where you had to build your ecto back up and come back and try again. But uh this game Mm-hmm. I I, th- I think the the concept of the game is pretty interesting. To you know, it's different. Scare people. Do you people. think? <laughs> do you think at any point in this game's development, like the early uh, early stages, mm. do you think EA was trying to make a Beetlejuice game? Because mm. I I mean the 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 concept is pretty. <laughs> That's similar a really good to, point. That is a, right. That is a, yeah. that is interesting. 
No, I probably th- <laughs> I don't think they. The, maybe maybe they were inspired by Beetlejuice. The designers uh, were, but be. I don't know yeah, that EA be. was trying to do licenses at right. the time. Because that was THQ and uh, Acclaim's it's true calling card well, during LJN, these days. LJN did have the lucrative Beetlejuice video game license. Of course, yeah, we were we were yes. talking 1993 Electronic Arts here. Yeah, so. Um, but they actually re-released this game fairly recently, and I'm, I guess by fairly recently, I mean 2006. I was going to say t- <laughs> 13 years ago. Okay, okay fine. fine. You know, the, the, re-release, the re-release would be considered retro at this point. Uh, you're right. <laughs> you're right. They re-released it uh, back in 2006 as part of uh, EA Replay for the PlayStation Portal. Oh. Remember that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, all those recent PSP games. All those very recent <laughs> PSP releases. UMD will never die. I forgot. I, I, well, first of all, I forgot. I, first of all, I forgot about the PSP. Yeah. Second of all, I forgot about EA Replay. Oh, EA Replay yeah. was great. Third of all, That's, I forgot that Haunting was on there. Haunting was on there. Oddly yeah. enough, like who? I don't even know if Haunting sold well at all or if anybody right, outside right. of this podcast he, as an in joke even really remembers <laughs> haunting <laughs> for any reason whatsoever uh. but uh, but it's a, surely an interesting game and uh had to be included on this list of course of course of course it's yeah. haunting haunting very nice hey hey guys i want to break in here and uh wait are you the devil yes oh oh it's the devil <laughs> yes it's me again Hey, Sorry, I was a little quiet during that segment there. Yeah, it's very respectful you guys, of you. Wanted to let you guys talk it amongst yourselves here, but uh, got a special congratulations, uh, congratulatory message here from from the other side. <laughs> from <laughs> the, other, the, other, the, other, the other side of what, Satan? The other side of Hollywood, and here it is. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Kane Hodder, better known as Jason from Friday the 13th. I just wanted to congratulate CJ, Greg, and Phil on recording 666 episodes of the Player One podcast. 666, nice number. They've been recording for 13 years, another good number, better number actually, and episode 666 will be the scariest one. Will the host survive? I certainly hope not. <laughs> oh, I'm on his side. Whoa, yeah, <laughs> that's quite uh, quite the message there. That's that's Jason Voorhees. You always Jason wonder what he sounded like. Jason Voorhees it is. just yeah. just he wished plays. us uh, death. Yes, yep. wished us to die. Satan only gets top tier celebrities. <laughs> I mean, clearly, <laughs> to congratulate you do. podcast hosts on. I mean, episode six hundred and sixty-six. Say, say, Satan. Yes. I don't. I don't know if you know this, but uh, mm. one of our one of our uh, co-hosts here is a huge uh, fan of the recent Friday the Thirteenth. Really? Video which game. one is it? Uh, is it Greg? No, it's not Greg. No, it's not no? Greg. No, nope. uh, no, nope. Phil. Well, that's me. It's Phil. You could you could have just said you. Oh wait, but... no, it's it's uh, no, it's it's the other one. It's, it's, uh, it's... Uh, what, what's his name? It's CJ. Oh, CJ. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Who's he again? I yeah, I'm I'm really big into the Friday the Thirteenth. You love that game. How, maybe, how, maybe we'll talk about that uh, a little little later. Oh, is that Here's foreshadowing? Foreshadowing. See, I'm using the foreshadowing technique. Very nice of Satan to uh, to hook that up for us to get get uh, Jason Voorhees himself, Kane Hodder. Yes, Kane Hodder to, to to wish us a congratulations. I, That's very very kind. I you know what? Thanks Satan for you know what for doing that. Yeah, Satan Satan gets a bad rep, but you know. I'm not a bad guy. No. No. You're See, just drawn that way. I bring celebrities. Just drawn that way. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, so what? What's 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 next on our countdown, Satan? <laughs> you were oh, my, am do I doing a, you're now? Do a bit yeah, you for each number? Okay, you, you, said you were doing a bit for each number. Yeah. <laughs> well, you were talking like him, so I I just didn't know. <laughs> and now, number twelve. I don't have a bid for this one. I'm sorry. <laughs> 12 is not a, a particularly... Well, who's, who's doing number 12? Hold on. Let me finish my <laughs> Who intro. Is okay. You know what? Here, 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 I just thought of something. Yeah? I'm the devil. You don't have to keep saying it. You can tell from the voice. Not, I know, but I just want to make sure everybody remembers. 
12. 12 is great because it's twice as much as 6. So 12, 12, 12 is like oh. twice the, the devil power. I'm pretty, sure it's, I'm pretty sure the devil can't multiply. The math ah. checks out. Number 12, Greg, what do you have for your devil game? <laughs> devil game. Uh, I, I, it's, it doesn't have anything to do with the devil. It has to do with aliens. Well, Ooh. screw it. We're moving on. Are the aliens from hell? Yes. Aliens aren't real like me, the devil. <laughs> so who cares? Yeah. Uh, it's Enemy Zero. Oh, okay, the, never mind. The... That's a pretty good game. Go ahead, talk that about it. That is a pretty good game, right? <laughs> yeah, no, Enemy Zero. We're talking about, of course, again, we're not... <laughs> <laughs> Episode 666, for some reason, yeah. we're talking about scary games. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> why not? Isn't the, oh. isn't the devil scary, Greg? My, my my game is EA Replay for the PSP. Wait, no. Oh, yeah, that's no, a scary no, game. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, sorry. Um, no, it's uh, Enemy Zero. And uh, yeah, when we're talking about scary games, I mean, I had to, had to talk about this one. It's basically uh, Alien, the movie Alien, hmm. as seen through the eyes of uh, Warp's uh, creator. Um, designer kenji ino yes um yes. who was uh, the guy behind d and d2 the the late great the late great, late great. kenji ino yes. um and the thing that made this so scary because it was if anyone has ever played d uh, or mm-hmm. knows about it it was a full motion video uh horror game mm-hmm. um and they take the same idea here where a lot of the a lot of the um scenes are full motion video uh, and actually stars the same character laura Mm-hmm. Um, although like she's the not same digital actress, right? Right. The, she's considered a digital actress. It has nothing to do with the game D. But well, the cool they just don't thing, have to do with the 3D model again. Pretty much. <laughs> the cool <laughs> thing, uh, and the scary thing was that so you're on a, a ship, you're on like a freighter, like like they were in Alien, but uh-huh. instead of landing on a planet, they had some kind of creature in a vault, in uh-huh. somewhere in the ship, and it escapes. And the thing that sucks about that is that it's murderous. And mm. uh, you can't see it. It's invisible. Oh. So the enemy mm. in this game, enemy zero, is invisible. And uh, it is a first-person shooter, I guess. You don't really shoot very much. And the only way you can tell where the enemy is is by sound and nothing yeah. else. You mm. don't have a radar. You can't tell its position. You don't have any visual cues whatsoever about where this alien is. The only visual cue you have about it is when it kills you. So, uh, yeah, you can just be walking along in, in extremely empty corridors, dark, empty corridors for the entirety of the game. And um, all of a sudden you'll hear a dinging and that's oh. the proximity sensor mm-hmm. uh-huh. uh, and it'll get louder and it'll, I believe it moves from left to right. I hope it moves from left to right. It'd be awfully hard to find the creature otherwise. <laughs> the, right. And uh, you just have to kind of figure out where it is. Mostly you want to try to stay away from it. But uh, hmm. yeah, it freaks you the hell out. It did yeah. back when it came out, which was what ninety six. Yeah. Um, but I did I played it recently as well, and it's it's amazing how fast you panic. Oh because yeah, because you can't. It's you're not like a space marine. You can't take a bunch of hits. Hmm. You don't have a bunch of weapons. Hmm. You can't just fire into the darkness. I think you have a a gun that's basically a taser that you and can no fire armor once, or anything. and no yeah. armor. You can fire once, and then it has to oh, recharge. Man. So yeah. if you miss, you're screwed. And hmm. uh, as it gets closer, especially if you miss and, and you actually let it attack you, it has like this blood curdling scream that it lets oh. out. And then you're ah. dead. <laughs> Man. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Enemy Zero. Did you guys Very ever play nice. that game? I played uh, a little of it. I, I played D, but I didn't play Enemy Zero. It's too no. bad. It's one of those games that it's so unique that I would love to see them do a remake. Maybe something, you know, thirteen that would years be ago. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's 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 too bad because there's really no other way to experience it. So yeah. mm-hmm. uh, it's too bad. Yeah, it is too bad. Yeah. All right, number eleven. It's time for the eleventh devil game in our cavalcade of horror and pain. <laughs> Let me cavalcade. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ca- ca- what do you okay. think about that one? Huh? That's a pretty. That's a pretty big word. There. I have a word of the day calendar. <laughs> Got a word for you right here. <laughs> word of the day calendar. <laughs> I always try to make it a point to use that day's word in casual conversation. Mm. You know, around hell. 
when I'm just hanging out, you know. Just killing time. Torturing and, and yeah. Yeah? Ta- taunting the damned. <laughs> taunting as the I damned. Do. As I, do. <laughs> I see. Taunting well, well, of the damned. Uh, Satan, if I can ask one question, what's tomorrow's yeah. word? Can you Tom- flip uh, over the uh, page? What's- hold on, let me see here. Let me see. Up. Oh, yeah, there it is. You know, and see, this is the thing, because I normally, because it's, it's usually, it's like a little treat for me uh-huh. to see what the new word is every day, so I'm kind of spoiling it, but, you know, this is a special occasion, it's your 666 episode, yeah. so, sure, uh, tomorrow's word is defenestrate. <laughs> <laughs> it means, <laughs> it means to throw something through a window. <laughs> So I guess, like that. hey, guess, <laughs> guess what's happening to Hitler tomorrow? Oh. <laughs> oh. Wow. wow. I'm going to have fun. Mm. Oh, sounds I have to, so, I have sounds to like it. <laughs> hmm. Oh. All you know, right, I, have this, I have this deep devilish voice, and it hurts my throat to do it for too long. Okay. You understand? So, yeah. Defenestrate tomorrow. So, so, who's, to that so one. who's up next? I don't know. I lost track oh. of all this, all this vocabulary talk. Oh, it's Phil, of course. <laughs> that creep. Phil, <laughs> what's your number 11 game? Well, Satan, thanks for asking. Um, my hmm. my game on our on our uh, Halloween countdown is Hall- wait what, what? huh? It's nowhere near Halloween, though. <laughs> That's the wait. What is it? Wait, what's the? It's gonna be August thirteenth. So this is yeah. embarrassing. Why? I don't we, know why we're. Why are we doing? Why because, are we doing uh, this? What is? What is this devil nonsense? I don't know. But anyway, anyway, my Halloween game is Namco's classic arcade beat 'em up Splatterhouse. Yeah, uh, that's from, a pretty good game. It, it's a great game. It's from 1988. It is a side-scrolling uh, game. <clears throat> it's on a two, two-dimensional two plane. Yeah. And you play as Rick. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great name for a video. <laughs> Rick. <laughs> protagonist, sure. Rick. The muscle-bound protagonist uh-huh. of the game. And he is trying to, uh, as as was the plot of many a video game back in the eighties. You were trying to rescue your oh. girlfriend. In this case, Jennifer. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's been captured by by uh, uh, hellish monsters, and uh, you are uh, Rick. Is is wearing what is known as the terror mask, which just looks like you know we got we, Kane Hodder was was here just a couple minutes ago. True. Uh, it looks like, it looks like, uh, Jason's mask from Friday the 13th. It does. It was, it was clear that, yeah. it was clear that Namco just wanted to make a Friday the 13th game, but didn't want to pay for the license. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's, you, you go around and you, you punch and kick, uh, monsters. You can pick up weapons. Uh, one of my favorites was this, uh, there was, there was a, a big two by four that you could swing Yeah. and, uh, monsters would explode in a in a delightfully uh, visceral gooish gooey display. way, mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah, if you if you hit them with the the weapons, <clears throat> sometimes they would fly into the background and splatter against mm. the wall. It was great. It was gory. I never played this in the arcade. Gross. I only uh, ever you played know, it on the Turbo Graphics. You know what? Same yeah. with me. I, I only ever played the Genesis one. Hmm. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Because uh, uh, well, the first one never came out on Genesis. Is that or correct? No. It was two, and three. two and yeah. three. Two and three. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I played. Yeah, none of none of the local arcades by me had Splatterhouse. I I too played it on the Turbo, and it, uh, the Turbo version was really good. It was very uh, very accurate to the arcade. And uh, yeah, the I I went on to play the Genesis sequels, and uh, they came out with another one mm. they, they did kind of a reboot in 2010 that i played a little bit of yeah and it was it was okay i guess i don't really remember much about it uh but it it just it, it didn't have that same effect right that the first one did because i mean you know back in the day 
that that game was kind of shocking in its gore. True. You know, uh, back in the day, mm-hmm. around the time that uh, the Mortal Kombat and the Night Trap thing were all happening, there was a uh, television show here in Canada aimed at teens called Street Sense. Yeah. And it would cover things like, a, it, it was mostly, it was meant to be like, you know, here's how to spend your money wisely and save and all that sort of thing. <laughs> but they kind of covered a bunch of different taught lifestyle topics when it came to that, that would be interesting to teenagers. And one of them was violence in video games. Oh, and I was on, <laughs> don't uh, be like Rick. Yeah. I was on, I was on uh, the show to talk about violent video games. And oh, wait, really? splatter splatter house two was uh, one of the games that we talked about. Oh wow. man. Is there footage of this somewhere? I went looking for it and I can't find it anywhere. Oh, There's oh not a gosh. lot of footage of street sense on YouTube, um, <laughs> which is a shame. It was a great show. Man. That's yep. pretty awesome. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, it was you should, pretty neat. You should you should continue that search. Speaking, speaking about I, the uh, that re- that reboot or whatever, I think it was before the time you know when retro games would get rebooted, but without mm-hmm. like paying homage to the original or not like being centered in the sixteen bit <coughs> era or anything. They would they would try to update them, but like make it a new game, like all you know, Altered Beast. Yes. Uh, Right, was that right. way, and Bionic Commando, Bionic Commando, yeah, they were where they weren't necessarily paying, they are referencing the the retro game as much as they should. So hmm. it'd be it'd be interesting if they did it again, if they would take the sort of Wonder Boy route or, uh, mm, yeah, you know, something something different but, different take on it. But you know what though, uh, the the Splatterhouse remake, mm-hmm. which uh, was a PS3 and uh, Xbox 360. Uh huh. It it does have it does have the original games in there. Splatterhouse one, two, and three. Oh, as, oh, really? As unlockable bonuses, yeah. Oh, that's cool. So Neato. if you if you're in the market, there you go. Okay. All right. Enough of that. It's time for number ten. And uh, who's doing number ten? Ten. 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 Uh, 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 ten. Oh, we're Go. circling back. Circling, we're circling back. back. Okay. We're circling back to. We're CJ. circling something. <laughs> <laughs> Circling something. To CJ. Uh, all right. Number well, 10. number 10 then is uh, got to be. Uh, <laughs> this isn't really a countdown, though. It's just thir- 13 no. games. It's just 13 <laughs> games. <laughs> Presented in no particular order. <laughs> exactly. Is uh, Eternal Darkness from Silicon Knights and Nintendo. This, this list, like the world, is chaos. <laughs> and it feeds me. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, back in 2002, I reviewed this game for EGM, uh, actually, and I gave it a 9.0. Uh, oh. And said at the time that the graphics were not at all memorable, but that the gameplay and story were what uh, really pushed it over the top. Uh, mm-hmm. Not to not to a 10, of course, because a game that looks like Eternal Darkness couldn't couldn't be a perfect 10. But uh, I enjoyed the gameplay so much. That uh, I gave it a nine, um, but basically you play as uh, a, a guy who's who's uh, actually play as a woman. The devil's got my tongue. <laughs> you actually, play as a woman. <laughs> oh, that was your tongue. I, I was aiming for something else. Yeah, I was gonna say the the main character is a woman. You start you start playing as like a Roman. You're talking, you're, you're looking for like a centurion or something, right? But the interesting thing about eternal darkness is that you play as a dozen different characters. So the game starts and you are playing as Alex Roivas, Alexandra Roivas, mm-hmm. uh, and her only Doing great. living relative, her grandfather, uh, Edward was killed. So, uh, she, returns to the estate, is trying to figure out uh, what has happened, and ser- is searching the mansion. She finds a secret room, and uh, he finds the book that's called The Tome of Eternal Darkness. So she reads it and gets transported, basically, uh, or the player gets transported to playing the characters that are in this tome. So mm. uh, there's 12 different ones, and uh, each each has their own sort of horrific story something horrific happened to them and uh they're all connected to are they all they all part of the roivas family are they all uh, ancestors of the roivas family it's the bloodline yeah something yeah it's mm. the bloodline yeah. yeah and you know one of the most memorable things about the game not the storyline but uh <laughs> the sanity effects in the game yes uh, yeah you know metal gear solid sort of uh did some of that with uh 
reading your save files and uh eternal darkness sort of uh trumped that by ran with that yeah yeah having different effects if your sanity gauge got too low uh it would do things like show a volume meter with the volume going way down and then uh, you'd flash back and things would be uh, all better or the your character would start shrinking down to like a minuscule size or you'd be on on the uh ceiling instead of the floor or mm. you'd go uh, through a door and expect to be in a certain room and it would be a completely different place. Um, so that was, I think one of the more unique <laughs> elements of the game, which I, I guess is part of the reason why then Silicon Knights ended up doing uh, the Metal Gear Solid mm. two remake on GameCube. I always, I always wish that, and I mean, maybe it was just because we were covering it, but I always wished that they had released that game without telling people that that stuff was going to happen. I think it would have been more effective. Yeah. Well, of course, you didn't know all of the sanity effects. Well, True. wasn't and there was one it? of them. One of them w- w- showed the GameCube uh, menu deleting your saves. Yeah, that's what I was just going to bring <laughs> yeah. up. Where it looks yeah. like it, it's wiping out your memory card. Yeah, yeah. yeah. erasing your memory which card, was which was cool. Apparently, uh, and I went back into EGM. I did an afterthoughts on this. I did an interview with Dennis Dyack where. I talked to him about that, and apparently they had like long discussions about how long that particular sanity effect should go on. <laughs> like, what's the right amount of time where people will get freaked out but not destroy their controller or their system? <laughs> <clears throat> Which is is great. And uh, one of the other tidbits in that interview actually is, uh, you know, they wanted to do a horror game, but uh, wasn't survival horror. You know, Resident mm. Evil was a really big thing back then. They wanted to, like, do something in the horror genre that was not Resident Evil sort of right. uh, b- violence and gore and, and such. So uh, you can play through the game multiple times and get different endings. And uh, I think to get the best ending, you have to play through three times. Oh, really? Oh, really? I yeah, didn't which that, I never but did. <laughs> but... Uh, but yeah, yeah I, I always said, I mean, th- those ones, what was the one, and maybe you just mentioned it, but um, wasn't there one, two, where it looked like bugs were crawling on your screen? Yes. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That oh, was an that effective one, one because, you that know. That would be, you, yeah. Especially where a lot of us played later at night, but of course, you know, on a CRT screen, a bug is a very, it looks like a silhouette. Yes. Across, right. across it, so it was very effective. And there was, they, they say there were ones where you go into a room and you like lose control of your character or they just get sliced in half and it yep. looked very convincing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, but yeah, then there were the cool ones like the volume being turned all the way down in your TV or, yeah, or <laughs> that's the erase cool. save file. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. CJ. Yes. It, it delights me to know that you are filled with psychological torment and suffering <laughs> yeah, at the hands true. of those those effects in that game. I, I <laughs> that one you, game. I hope you wept openly I during did. your review. I oh, did. it fuels me. You know. <laughs> okay. You no, know, we're going to move on in a minute here. But before we do, I have another special greeting. Yeah? From one of my dark minions that I would like to share. Hello, this is Sven Gulli. You see me every Saturday night on MeTV. And I just wanted to congratulate Phil and the Player One podcast team on having reached episode number 999. 999? Are you out of your mind? Why don't, why don't you just wait till you hit 1,000? It's only one more week. Seriously, episode 999? Uh, uh, Sven, uh, I think you got it upside down. Upside down? Right. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Listen, uh, let me just congratulate Phil and the team on reaching episode 666. Ooh, it's cursed, I tell you, because I was cursed to hold the paper upside down. Anyway, congratulations. <laughs> Keep uh, doing the fun stuff about video games, and I'll see you Saturday nights on MeTV. That's Sven Gooley. That's amazing. That's you guys Sven are hilarious. Gooley. Of course. Yeah, if you're from Chicago, you probably get even more out of that. I mean, maybe <laughs> maybe watch Sven Gulli on me TV, but if you're from Chicago, you get anything out of that. <laughs> Sven Gulli. Sven Gulli was and and remains to this day a, a a horror TV 
like a schlock horror TV host. Yes. Who who hosted all the like, you know, horror movies that they would show on the weekends on our on our local UHF station. Yes. Back uh back in the Chicagoland area. Yeah. And he's still he's still uh, he's doing still kicking stuff. around. He's still, he's doing, still doing it, which is great. And oh my gosh, Spanguli is the best. It's true. Just just dumb jokes, stupid puns and songs. Yep. I lo- I love Spanguli. That delights it me. It was an amazing get for me, <laughs> the Dark Lord. <laughs> Let Satan. me tell you. You know what, Satan? Yeah. Seriously. What? Out with okay. it. Come on. You're okay. You're okay by me, man. Oh, thank you. That you know what? Seriously, having having Svenguli wish us a happy anniversary makes 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 uh, my heart swell with joy and love that I yes. know you normally hate. I do I hate say, it. Oh, this is a weird joy thing. And love. But it's but I'm it's really angry about that. I can tell. I can tell by by I'm, the motions of your arms. Yeah. There, yeah. Yeah, the very herky jerky. That's, <laughs> but you know what? It's it's joy and love for for evil and darkness, Satan. Yeah. So so. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll just move on to number <laughs> yeah, nine here. Well. And oh boy, you know why nine's a great number? Why? Let me let me tell you about this Dante fella. Six upside down. What? Now this Dante fella, he uh he knows all about. <laughs> The nine circles of hell, which is where I live most of the time. Yeah. Right? Oh. Yeah. There's nine circles at my place, and they all represent different uh, sins uh, where I put uh, all those poor, unfortunate souls. Wait, that's copyrighted. We can't use that. So sad, but true. So there's nine, there's nine circles of hell. And this gotcha. is number nine. Are they? Oh. Then, you want to oh. know what? You want to know the circles? I'm going to run through them. No, real quick. no. Oh, we got God. limbo. Oh. We got lust. Oh, I love that one. We got gluttony. I love that one too. Donuts are delicious. We got greed. We got wrath. Like uh-huh. in that uh, Star Trek movie. We got uh-huh. heresy. We got, oh. oh, we got violence. Always a classic. We got fraud. Which is, you know, seems oddly specific, but that's there. <laughs> and we got a treachery. Uh, you're saying that wrong. There. Treachery. Yep. It's uh, treachery. Oh, it? treachery. 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 Yeah. Wasn't he the lead singer treach. of Naughty by Nature? <laughs> that's Tretch. Oh, Tretch. Sorry. Yeah. You know how long I've been saying that incorrectly? How long? A long time since you're the devil. Well, a, a long time since 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 the, the dawn of, of time itself, which is how long hell has been around. Yeah. I think I haven't read the Bible. <laughs> All right. Well, maybe we should get get to the thing. Let get me, to, okay, guy, well, now I got to switch over Ugh. to the Google Doc so I can see who's doing. Oh, number nine. <laughs> of course. We shouldn't have shared our Google Doc with Satan. That's just, no, it seems. <laughs> no, and you, you know how hard it is to idea. remove Satan from one of your Google uh, uh, folders? You'll, yes. you'll never wipe me out. I'm in your search history now, you heathens. <laughs> Let me tell you, you know, you know who's who. Takes a good look at your search history. St. Peter, and he ain't gonna <laughs> like me being on there. I don't think you're the worst thing that's gonna be on my search history. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg, here's Hi. with number nine. Uh, number nine for me is Dead Space 2. It's oh, another space based one. Dead Space 2. Yeah, what is it with you? Did, you? did you think we were doing outer space games? Maybe. Did you think this was like, oh, it's the, the, the anniversary of the moon landing. We you know must what? There be aren't, space there aren't games. enough space-based horror games. Uh, that's true. Di- Dino Crisis 3. Yeah, that's nuts. Is that in space? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, absolutely it and is. And the future. Yeah, future, future dinosaurs. I love future yeah. dinosaurs. You know what, though? St- t- uh, listening to your uh, run through the, uh, the, the different circles of hell reminded me. Mm. I, uh, I actually went and played... Um, the Lost once, uh, which was the game that Irrational Games was building based on Dante's oh, really? Inferno. Yeah. Oh. Got wow. to go visit Irrational Games and play the game that was in development. And yeah. Did a whole big feature on it, I think, in EGM. I want to say that I did. And then yeah. that game was canceled. It was completed and canceled. Just as I had planned. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> everyone excited about it. And then 
then pull the rug them out. of it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'll file that one under uh, lust, I guess, because you were lusting for that game. Not really. At um, Circle Two. Dead Go Space ahead. Two. Yeah. Is one of the scariest games I've ever mm. played. Um, Agreed. And. I mean, I really enjoyed the first one, but the second one, I, I honestly don't remember too many details about it. I do remember one scene in particular, and I think it was the second one, where you're running down a long corridor. Yeah. Like a really long corridor. Boy, what is it with you in space games involving like corridors? corridors. I know, right? <laughs> but it just freaked me out. No, but you know what was really great about that game? Um, it, the gameplay was awesome, and the, the enemies were really scary, but the sound design was incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that hmm. game would just kind of, especially if you played it right, which was like in the dark with the sound cranked. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it would make you jump right out of your uh, your skin, as I'm sure the devil would appreciate. I'm surprised uh, <laughs> that you mentioned that scene and not the uh, the one where you had to poke the needle in your own eye. Oh, oh my god, I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, was that, was that in the is, second uh, one? Maybe the most horrific yeah. thing I've oh, ever geez. experienced yeah, in I a video game about that is yep. is pulling that trigger and watching that needle lower into Oof. your eye. Oh, yeah. Oof. <laughs> yes, you're right. That was one of the moments in games where I was like, I don't, I really, 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 really don't want to press this button. Yeah. No. Like, yeah. yeah. But it's and, such oh, a good man. scene, too. It's so memorable. It really is. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, I think uh, I blocked it out until you brought it up. Yeah. I think I I may have told this story on the show before, but it certainly would have been years ago. Um, I I played the first Dead Space at 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 the request of you two. Yeah, because I yeah. that that game completely kind of went you know right over my uh, 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 past my radar. Yep. Uh, but you two were going on about how great it was, so I I picked up the first Dead Space cheap. Uh, it was on clearance. Played through it absolutely adored it so i was right there for dead space 2 and mm. like you were saying greg i played it the way you're supposed to be i did not play that game during the day no i played that game i like that that was one of those things where it was like because well dana couldn't even watch it it freaked her out oh, so really? bad she was huh. just like you know what play that you i'm gonna go to bed play that game so i would start <laughs> playing that game at like midnight okay? oh man <laughs> so it would be pitch black uh, you know, all the lights in the house are out. It's dark outside. Everything's dead quiet. It's me playing this game. Mm-hmm. And and the thing about the Dead Space games is they use the the music. They have that oh kind of God. ambient music. Yeah. And and they they it's like the musicals kind of start ramping up at parts, like to kind of like almost get you set for a jump scare mm-hmm. that. Doesn't, doesn't always come. show up. <laughs> yeah. So so I'm playing through this game and I'm constantly on edge. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm I you know constantly tensed up, constantly ready to just jump and scream. And I'm playing through the whole game just like sneaking around corners and being very methodical about that's, it. That's and that's how I play those games in general yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And I and I played the game with uh I would always use the uh, the cutter. Like I never yep, used any of the more advanced Same weapons. Here. It was no. it was always you can just do, I, well, the cutter uh, was so much fun. Li- limbs. Yeah. Limbs. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean it was more fun to play that way. Absolutely. Yeah. And there was one point, there was one evening I was playing this game, and it was late. It was probably like two or three in the morning. And like I said, it's it's dark. I'm tense. It's very, very late, so I'm I'm obviously exhausted. So I'm a little, I'm kind of half asleep. So I'm kind of punchy anyway. And I'm playing the game and I'm sneaking around the corner and the music is, is getting all tensed up. And all of a sudden my house starts to shake. Like oh. the, the, I'm sitting on the couch and the couch starts rumbling Welcome to and, California. I can hear, and I can right. hear rattling and it seems like the whole house is moving and it's, it, it's, it's, you know, it's an earthquake. I mean, I'm in California at the time, an, an earthquake hits but because it's like two or three in the morning and I'm sleep deprived <laughs> and I'm and I'm scared to death and I'm already tensed up, there was a good like maybe three or four seconds where I thought the game was coming to life <laughs> and somehow the game was making this happen. Mm. And then it clicked. I was, oh, crap, this is, this is actually an earthquake. 
And then right. it's, you know, run, running off to, to get in a doorway or something, which is not what you're supposed to do in an earthquake anyway, it turns out. But, <laughs> wow. but yeah, I, it was just hmm. a, a, an extra level of, of force feedback that, uh, that's made pretty, that, made that's that pretty game great. memorable. It's it was, great. it was good stuff. So, yeah, it's, I mean, uh, and the other thing about Dead Space too, just to mention it is and spoiler alert too, if you've yeah. never played it, uh, so the fact the that you go back to the ship that is in Dead yeah. Space 1. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, that's an area in Dead Space 2, and it's completely different than the first game. I mean, it's the same yeah. layout, but uh, right. different stuff happens. Just such a really cool way of using <laughs> that yeah. first game ship uh, and memories of that first game uh, in the second one. Just yeah. so good. And I remember almost nothing about the third game. And <laughs> I remember not wanting to play the third game for very long. Yeah. You know, I don't I don't like to take credit for stuff. Oh, uh, no. I mean, it was I you? Because I'm the devil. Yeah, uh, it was me. That damn. was me. I was like... When did you become everyone... CEO of Electronic Arts? <laughs> Oh, pretty early on. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, <laughs> pretty early on. Pretty early. Who, who, who do you think came up with the idea for Bolter Guy? Oh, there you That's go. Based on, that was based on my, my, my actual childhood. <laughs> I see. I see. When, when, when I was a, a ghost, I guess. Oh. I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. But you killed Dead know. Space. Okay. Can I you, did. Can it we was... have it back? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> There's a new game coming out next year. Oh, great. Uh, oh, great. P.S. is psych. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Satan. Torment. You always do that Eternal stuff. Torment. Ah, pulling the rug Jeez, that right out. Guy is, guy is rude, and he's got rude a bad dude. attitude. Yeah. He's crude, too. Yeah. Mm. Hey, you know what? You know what it's time for now? What's that? Well, it's time for number eight. Because I could be just a <laughs> nine. <laughs> Sequential numbers and all that. Now it's time for number eight. Hey, that reminds me of a joke. Yeah? Why is six <laughs> afraid of seven? Why? Because seven will drag you into the hoary depths of hell. <laughs> That's the punchline. Good. There you go. That's good. Number, number eight. Uh, who's doing that? Will be, will, well, it will be Phil. Thank you, Satan. You're very welcome. So my game that I chose for number eight, even it, though this is not what? sequential whatsoever, it you know who cares? It's just the it eighth just, game on the list. We're numbering it for our convenience. That's not right. For That's any right. sort of ranking. Yeah. So don't and read you know, anything into this. And this this game, yeah, this game should be of special interest to our special guest this week. You, you don't say. Why is that? Well, because my my game is Doom, the original. Mm. Doom, which we talked about, I think on our last was it our I, last episode? I we think talked so. About Doom? Yes, yeah. 1993's Doom from from ID Software. Yeah. Uh, because in in that game, in in Doom, you open up a portal to to hell, which which is my house. <laughs> my my home is in Doom. That's great. You know, I actually knew that because when the developers when they were working on that game. Back in the early yeah. 90s, I, I actually, they, they called me up and wanted to come over and, <laughs> and take a lot of reference photos so they could get the layout right. Yeah. Because a lot of those, a lot of, a lot of my, you know, on my estate there in hell, you know, it's a lot Your of villa? those corridors. Yeah. My, my country villa. <laughs> I, I have, you know, there's a lot of those big empty rooms. And little corridors snaking around, so you know <laughs> demons can come out and 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 uh, you know, harass the 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 my victims, sure. my 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 damned souls who hang out in hell with mm -hmm, me because mm -hmm. I make them. <laughs> so it's pretty nice. It sounds nice. Well, you know what, Satan? Though that 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 sounds like a lot of work, but it's it it was really worth it because Doom is wonderful. You know, it's it's uh, it's not it's not scary in the traditional kind of survival horror y sense. Yeah. Although Doom Three kind of goes for that sort of thing, but I'm I'm talking the OG Doom, mm. where it's not really like yeah, that kind of like you know oh, jump scare kind of horror, but it's it's the that 
you know, having a glut of demons and monsters rushing at you, and yeah. you're just running away, unloading a shotgun into them, trying to just trying to survive. You know, uh huh. It's 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 great. So, I agree. I, I, <laughs> I agree absolutely adore Doom. I love the the hellish imagery. Although I think it takes place on Mars. I think that's like a there's a portal to hell on Mars. Something well, the, yeah, like that, that. That's the story in Doom 2016. Yeah. For sure, which yeah, would, no, it's, would it's, make a lot of sense Doom. that they got that out of the original, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's the same in Doom. But it's yeah, yeah but it's uh it's it's you know, it, it, great evil imagery, you know, very yep. very satanic looking. Yep. You know? So I, I I'm you know, I, you know what? I'm down with the devil and I'm down with Doom. So <laughs> Okay. I love it. I'm and I'm looking forward to uh Doom Eternal as well. So yeah. I'll have to I hope you minutes. are too. Yeah. Yes. So let me tell you about number seven here real quick. Oh, okay. Not not the game. Lucky number which, seven. With yeah, well see, this is this is the whole thing with seven. Okay. <laughs> CJ's going to be talking about this seventh uh-huh. game. Yeah, but okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. so you got yeah. lucky number seven, which I don't like because I'm the devil and I like bad stuff. So I like unlucky numbers. Uh huh. Which seven ain't. Math checks out. Also, whenever there's a song that <laughs> that uses the word seven, yeah, you know what they always rhyme it with? Because there there's what? not a whole lot of words that rhyme with seven. That's true. There's, there's eleven. 11 which we already covered, but that's like, you know, people start thinking of the convenience store. Yeah, yeah, and, that's true. And Slurpees? That, that, that place isn't evil because Slurpees are delicious, right? Well, their hot dogs are questionable. <laughs> oh, 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 I thought I could trick you with that one. <laughs> I thought I could lure you in <laughs> to enjoy a roller dog. Oh, roller you know, I've never, dog. I don't think I've ever had a roller dog. Yes, you have. I don't I think have. I have. You may not I've, admit I've it had, to yourself or to anyone else, but you've had them. Oh, I've I mean, had a Seven Eleven eh, roller maybe, dog yeah. before. You've yeah. lived a long time, CJ. I guess you're if, right. How have I not? Get, had, oh, I've not seen it come off of the roller. Let's, there you go. If, if if you get there at the right time, and and they're fresh, they're not bad. <laughs> okay. But if you get there and it's clearly been there for a couple of days and it's all wrinkly <laughs> and dried out, then you're in trouble. <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know what else is wrinkly and dried out? <laughs> oh Lord! Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those those wrinkly dried out roller dogs. You know what those are? What? Satan's, Satan's wiener. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can just I can pluck it off, and a new one will grow in its place. Ew. Uh, so you see, hydra, just like I got a hydra down just there, just like the end of the Dante's Inferno game. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everyone forgets right. about happening. Satan's that? wiener. Yeah, the that's final right. boss was naked. Yeah. Wow. And but he, no, was, and he no. was packing. To my point. To mm-hmm. my point. Before yeah. we got off on this roller dog wiener bit. Yeah. Whatever. This is a good song. Bit. Good thank bit. you. I'm, I'm pretty oh. pleased. Yeah, yeah. I'm just just off the top of my head. <laughs> just yeah. I'm just I'm just I'm, I'm spitballing here. Uh-huh. I'm work. I'm working on my tight five, and this is really helping me out. So I appreciate you letting me on the show. Sure. So, you know, they have these songs that have seven in them, and they always rhyme them with heaven. Yep. With that. True. With that place full of those pompous douchebags. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that guy. That's the one. <laughs> so hoity-toity. Look at me. I'm. 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 I'm the good guy. Makes makes Satan the bad guy. Whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Whatever. Labels, man. Labels. We are never I getting through this list. We are not. Yeah, well, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Buckle up, bucko. It's probably about halfway through. We're, number we're, seven. Number seven. Heavenly number seven. Heavenly, yes. Ugh. Ugh. Uh, just gross. CJ, what is it? Number The number seven game here... Uh, pr- I think it was the reason I bought an Xbox 360, uh, oh, yeah. really, and that is to get Dead Rising from Capcom. Oh, yes. Back there, yeah. You sure played uh, it a lot. I played it a ton, yeah. That was a good game. Yes, uh, and one of the most controversial things in the game was the save system and how the game clock itself, you had 72 hours uh, mm-hmm. to 
you know, get in, do your whole photojournalist thing, because Frank West, you know... He's covered wars. He's covered wars, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and you have 72 hours to do all this stuff and escape, and uh, people didn't like that you couldn't do everything in the game uh, in that allotted time. So the which, game itself which, was sort of meant to there's be a t- replayed. There's a ton which, of stuff to do in that game. There's a ton Would of stuff to say- do in the game. Yeah. Would you say Dead Rising is a roguelike? Possibly. And Hmm. and I think uh, it definitely has some elements of games that have come, you know, out in the last five years that I think people are a lot more forgiving of or they even like. (laughs) But back in 2006, they didn't like those things at all. Are you saying Dead Rising was ahead of its time? Uh, I I believe so. I believe so. But it's another they, one of those things where it, it got reviewed and people didn't like the save system. People didn't like the fact that you uh, couldn't do everything in the game in the 72-hour time limit. And uh, Capcom changed it up in the sequels and uh. made that a different thing. And I, I think it sort of lost what made Dead, the original Dead Rising such a mm. uh, unique experience because Definitely lost some charm yeah frank yeah. west lands on top of this mall that is being surrounded by zombies and uh he's getting radio transceiver messages from otis about survivors in different parts of the mall and whatnot and you cannot you can't maybe, maybe you can I, I i haven't done it but maybe uh maybe you can uh save everybody I, but i don't think you can save everybody you have to yeah. You have to use the time that you have and uh, decide what you're going to do and whether you have time to go across the mall and save certain people and bring right. them back to the security room. And that's just a very, a really interesting mechanic that I yeah. happen to really like. And uh, I think people, and this is true in you know some recent games like uh, Crypt of the Necrodancer and Spelunky and uh, Cadence of Hyrule, where if you lose, like as a video game player... Nobody likes to lose, but in Dead Rising, if you lost, you could start the game again with everything that you had learned up to that point, like all of your mm. leveling and any moves that you had. So you can make uh, make a, a run much, much easier the second time through. And I think, you know, it was a conscious design decision on their part that people at the time did not like. Uh, yeah. You could only save the game in certain areas of the mall uh, in bathrooms. You had to sit down on like the green couch in the bathroom or in the uh, in the uh, security room and save there. So people were upset about that too. <laughs> uh, there were, you know, a lot of things to get upset about. But the game itself, I think, was just a technical uh, showpiece at the time because of so many zombies that uh, could be shown on screen. Uh, there apparently yeah. there's an EGM review where they said up to 800 zombies can be shown simultaneously on Jeez. the screen at once, and there is a f- sort of final scene in the game where you are surrounded on top of a tank, mm. and uh, you get to see all of those zombies. Well, what, and what was the what was the there was an achievement for killing a ridiculous yes. number it of was zombies? The, it was yeah. the population of the town. Population of Willamette, yeah. Colorado. Do, do we remember the number? I don't remember the number. It was it was multiple thousands though, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hold on a second. I believe you keep talking. Okay, look it up. Look it up. Yeah, but that achievement, uh, I I did get it. Yeah. Because this was also like, uh, you know, one of the early Xbox 360 games where achievements had just come out, and right, you know, everyone was crazy about achievements, including myself. Uh, and uh, in the mall, there's this area below the mall, a little parking garage sort of area. 53,594. Uh, there you go. Where you could run over zombies. You could just drive a car over and over again and uh, smash <laughs> zombies. I remember yeah, it was just CJ telling me about that. Cause yeah, I could spend one of those games that, because I was time. I wasn't a big zombie or zombie game person at all. Mm-hmm. But of course, this was back when, like CJ saying, like Xbox 360 was new, achievements were new, and that whole community thing was really taking hold. Where it's like you go online and you say, CJ's online, he's playing Dead Rising. And there'd be like 30 yeah. people on your friends list that were playing Dead Rising. So, so well, I have to yeah. play Dead Rising because you got to see what it's all about. And I, hmm. yeah, I vividly remember CJ saying, like, you just got to grab a car and go down to that tunnel and just, and just run people over. back and forth <laughs> and run yeah. them all over. And it was great, man. It was great getting that achievement. <laughs> you, you know, CJ. Yeah. 
I, I, I did a little work on that game myself. <laughs> oh. Oh. I did a little, I, I was, I was, uh, a little work for hire for Capcom at the time. Mm hmm You know what, you know what my, my input on that game was? What's that? Well, you know, you're talking about this was kind of early in the Xbox 360's life. Mm hmm So it was, you know, not a lot mm -hmm. of people had high definition televisions oh. at that point. Oh. You remember that? I remember people, that. Yes. People still Satan, had standard I, I remember definition that. Yeah. TVs. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I was the one who whispered uh, in the <laughs> ear of the producer, make the font really tiny. It was, too. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. So yeah well, of course, people, people who had be able to read. standard definition televisions had to play it uh, sort of letterboxed. Yeah. And uh, the, the type was very small for those I know, people. I, I certainly had a, an SDTV at that point still. Yeah. And, yeah, it was... It was there was a lot of squinting and a lot of leaning forward, <laughs> yeah, to to see to see what was being written on the screen. So, thanks, Satan, for that. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, you jerk. I hope you go blind, and I hope you die a sinner, and I'll see you in hell. <laughs> oh my gosh! But yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the uh, original Dead Rising, I think the feeling of peril yeah. and the uh, sort of helplessness that you can't do everything that you're being told yeah. to do, uh, just uh, heightened heightened the level of tension in the game. Yeah. And of course, you're in the shopping mall. You can combine items and make like a double chainsaw with a <laughs> boat oar, you know, and just mow through zombies. Yeah. And uh, you know, it used video game logic. You had to collect these magazines or books that would extend the lives of uh, or extend the durability of those weapons. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just just a really interesting game. I don't think the sequels have done it uh, justice. And uh, yeah, maybe maybe now that people are more into roguelikes and that type of gameplay, maybe we'll see somebody attempt something like Dead Rising again. That would be cool. Yeah. Well, we're gonna be moving on. I've <laughs> talked too much about Dead Rising apparently <laughs> to, for for well, sake. More to say? No, I'm done. I'm done. You, are are you sure? Yes. Okay. Well, because we're going to move on to number six in a bit. And ho, oh, six, six, six. I love it. <laughs> you know I do. Uh -huh. but, but before we do that, I have another friend who would like to say something to you grotesque bastards. <laughs> Hello, kitties. It's me, John Kassir, the voice of the Crypt Keeper. And my good buddy Chris Johnson tells me that congratulations are in order for CJ, Greg, and Phil on recording 666 episodes of the Player One podcast. 666, my favorite number. And speaking of favorite numbers, 13, 13 spooktacular years they've been recording. <laughs> That's a long time. Believe me, I've been around a long time. <laughs> Want to know what my favorite line is from the Tales from the Crypt Pinball Machine? Oh. It's not game over. It's tonight's episode. Is it about a man with three balls? <laughs> 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 well, congratulations, CJ, Greg, and Phil. All the beast. <laughs> oh, that's so oh, good. I love it. So good. I love it. It's amazing <laughs> how you Keeper. slips into that voice so perfectly. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, the Crypt Keeper is so wonderful. Yes. I love it. Oh, what a day. Yes, yes. The Crypt Keeper, good friend of mine. So, you're welcome. You Thank jerks. you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, 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 you better thank me, you <laughs> jerks. So, so you're I'm doing a some kind of a mobster <laughs> accent. <laughs> Suddenly I'm some sort of devil mobster over here. Yeah. Hey, forget about it. Greg. Hi. Hit us up with your six, six, six. Best game of all time, which is what this list is. This is not what this list this is. is exactly no, what it is not even close to what this list is. Not at all. Nope. The devil defines what is and so, what isn't. On this list of not best games of all time, <laughs> um, number six 
<laughs> is something I think it's the newest game we have on the list, actually. Is it? Oh, <clears throat> yeah. It's, I believe it is. Uh, a Plague Tale Innocence from oh, Focus uh-huh. Home Interactive, uh, which just came out earlier this year, and which, if you uh, were listening to the show or following me on Twitter, know that I absolutely loved this game from start to finish. Such a cool story. Yes. Uh, takes place uh, in uh, well during the plague during the mm. the, bl- in the France. Black plague in right. France, um, mm. where but 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 it it kind of supernaturalizes the plague. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Supernaturalizes. Yep. If that's not a word, it is now. It is not a word to be supernaturalized. <laughs> okay. Um and. It's all the better for it. It makes it a really interesting story uh, that revolves around uh, a, a young girl and her little brother mm-hmm. uh, who, uh, again, are making their way through plague-infested France, uh, being chased by the Spanish Inquisition. Nope. Because uh, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. It's true. <laughs> oh, my favorite kids in the hall sketch. Yes. <laughs> Who knew the devil was such a big kids in the hall fan? That's right. I love Canadian humor. <laughs> Don't we all? Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just it's just fantastic from start to end. And the uh, what I really loved about it was well, the, the visuals are amazing. It's gory and grotesque and brutal, and kind of cool. makes you cringe a lot. Yep. Um, but the 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 rats themselves are treated as mm. these supernatural creatures that they don't just spread the plague but they kind of roll over things like a wave and just basically destroy whatever they touch um yep. huh and it's a really interesting play mechanic that you you kind of you spend a lot of the game trying to avoid them um using fire and and different things like that and staying out of dark areas um, but it, it, it really switches things up a lot. And then, and then you actually spend a lot of the game in stealth mode where you're trying to avoid armed members of the inquisition when you really have no weapons. So, yeah. Just, well, the just other a great thing about the rats to too, uh, you know, not only are you using fire to avoid the rats, but you use the, uh, absence of light to attract them to things. Yes. You can use them as a weapon, uh, <clears throat> early on by, yeah. Yeah. By sort of trapping people or, or tricking people into getting into dark areas or darkening yes. areas that they're in. Yes. Huh. It's just a really, Highly uh, recommended. interesting game. One of my favorites of the year for sure. Mm. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people are waiting for a sale on this one, but really <laughs> you should get on it because it is uh, so good. I, I don't think you will regret pain it's been on sale a couple of times now uh so you can get it for under 40 dollars pretty easily but uh hmm. people should jump on it it's totally worth nice. it and it came out of nowhere and i think it that did. uh the developers deserve the success so they definitely do yeah 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 very very happy with that game that is pretty cool i should i should try that game you should. Really should you should i think yeah. it's not that long either i mean i was able to play through it in a couple weeks oh really so actually oh. not even not even a couple weeks Nice. Okay, are we ready? Uh, we're ready. We're entering the top five. Oh my gosh, here it goes. Yes, the five most devilish games ever, as decided by the editors of Next Generation <laughs> Magazine. <laughs> Wait a th- no, uh, no. That's exactly That's what not, this is. It's not at all what Fully this is. Fully endorsed. No. That magazine also doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, you know Why? Why? Because I killed Prince. <laughs> I killed no. Prince. No. Yeah, it's I, in hell I with like me now. Oh. You know which circle it's in? Which? No. It's, which in, it's, it's in treachery. Oh. Yeah. Because hmm. okay. I, I, I didn't really have a magazine circle and I didn't know where else <laughs> to put it. And I had some room in treachery. Yeah. So a lot it, of copies of Reader's Digest in there. Oh, well, and, 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 and all the magazines. All, yeah, all of them. You yeah. know, yeah. Playboy, uh, Better Homes and Gardens, <laughs> Highlights for Children. Uh-huh. Highlights for Children. And the rest. <laughs> They're all there. <laughs> Treacherizing everything. I don't know. They can't all work, folks. Here's number five. Let's go to Phil. Thanks, Satan. You know what, Satan? For the record, I thought that was a pretty good bit. Thank you. It's very kind of you to say. You're very welcome. 
So my number five is the game that introduced the survival horror genre to the mainstream. The game that, oh, oh, oh. that coined the term survival horror. Carrier? No. Carrier. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, Louise! No, what was that one for Dreamcast Blue? Blue Stinger, Blue Stinger, Stinger. Blue Stinker, Blue Stinker. Game was oh, terrible. Gross. Terrible game. Yeah. No, I mean, of course, Capcom's classic from 1996, Residential Evil. Have you seen I this actually, game? When I worked at um, a, a game rental store, I had people ask me uh, for Presidential Evil. I had that all the time times. as well. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I wow. was I was at Babbage's at the time, and that was a yeah. Presidential Evil was a popular yeah uh, request. Uh. So, but uh, I played a lot of Resident Evil back in the day. I yeah. loved, loved, loved Resident Evil. Uh, I, I the certainly, original like is it is the original your favorite of the series? Uh, I mean, no, I can't say yeah. that because Resident Evil Four. Yeah. Is is I'm, well. I mean, Resident Evil Two is, two is outstanding. Great. I love, yes. love, love Two. Uh, four is, of course, I'm a, a masterpiece of a game. Um, there's also a Gun Survivor, which uh, <laughs> right. I, I don't. Right. I, I don't think I ever even played Gun Survivor. Um, no. But you know, uh, but the Resident, uh, the first Resident Evil, uh, certainly holds a special place in my heart for, for being the game that, that kind of introduced me to genuine horror themed games. You know, this was, this was the, I, I, as far as I remember, this was the first game that, that gave me a jump scare. Oh, really? Those oh, okay. dogs bursting through that window. You yep. know, the one, you know, the ones I'm talking about. I know the ones, you know, there, it had it had the gore like I had, I had not really seen before. You know, it had the it had creepy zombies. It was it was mm. wonderful. It it it's it really you know kind of going back to what I was saying, uh, you know about Greg's uh, uh, Dead Space. You know, I it was a game that I played through completely tensed up. You know, ready and waiting for something to jump out. Or to grab me, yep. or or burst into a room, and um, yeah, I I remember because because um, <laughs> there was there was one uh, room I was so so on edge was I waiting for jump scares in that game uh, that there was there was one room I remember going into, and you know of course the first Resident Evil game uh, had those fixed camera angles. Mm-hmm. That's you know, right. As you're walking around, controls. yeah, had those tank controls, which I mean, at the time, that's all we knew. Exactly. You know, so it was not like how do I move in a 3D space? Oh, tank yeah. controls, tank controls, yeah. and you had, you know, the rooms were different angles, so you'd be, you know, as you'd walk across the room, it would cut to a different angle and that sort of thing. Yeah, and they would they would play around with that, where it's like you know you walk into a room and it looks like it's empty, and as you kind of make your way through the room. It'll cut to a camera angle and suddenly, oh, there's a zombie hiding behind some furniture or something. Yeah. And there was one room I went into and, and this game, uh, one of the enemies in the game, they had, remember the giant spiders? Of course. I think they were like giant tarantulas or something like that. And they were, they were, you know, uh, powerful enemies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it was always kind of a scary moment when you had to face one of those giant spiders and I remember walking into one room and I could see just a little bit dangling from the top of the screen what looked like spider legs. Just just kind of hanging off the top of the screen. And I got freaked out because I was like, oh crap, there's a giant spider in here. And I ran out of the room. Because <laughs> I was like, I don't know if I'm I don't know if I'm prepared. Uh, right. Both uh in terms of ammunition and, and health items. Or certainly uh, uh, mentally to, to yeah. face a giant spider right now. So, you know, I went and tried to find some ammo lying around and kind of steeled myself for it. And then I, I burst into the, the room where I'm expecting this spider to fall down from the ceiling and, and, and attack me. Uh, but it turned out it was just like a ceiling fan. 
<laughs> so <laughs> that's great. I had I had, I had played that's myself. Uh, yeah, you know, it was one of those kind of things. It's it's I, I, I guess yeah. a cat scare is what you would <laughs> use if we were using a uh, movie terminology. Yeah, but it was, uh, it was always great to enter a room and hear something sinister oh, yeah. happening too, because you could like maybe hear a zombie feasting on the brain. Yeah, you'd, hear, you'd hear crunching and you're crunching, kind of wet slurpy noises yeah and you wouldn't know what that was until you switched camera angles and then it, yeah uh, <laughs> it reveals Our, itself man do you I, no. I, I mean i know you do i know you remember this because this is it's a it's a, probably the most iconic scene in that game yeah it's the one uh, where you walk in the hallway and there's your, somebody gnawing on your, your first mm-hmm. your first encounter with the zombie yeah you yeah you walk well you walk into the room and you can see a zombie hunched over someone, and then yep. it cuts to a little pre-rendered cutscene, and you see the zombie look up and turn around, and you see that that creepy dead eye yeah. of the zombie staring at you. Which I believe, if the if the stories are accurate, that that zombie eye that is looking at you is an actual like they've took a photograph of an, an actual cadaver's eyeball. Oh, really? Huh. Gross. I, be, I, I seem to remember reading that. <laughs> okay. And, <laughs> We're starting some, that rumor now. In some article. That may, maybe I am making that up, but I don't <laughs> think I am. I think yeah. that was an actual cadaver eyeball, uh-huh. which is why it looks uh, so, mm. so kind of un- unnerving and grotesque. Yeah. Very unnerving, yeah. yeah. And... You know, of course, of course, the horror in the game is offset a little by the uh, live action intro <laughs> and the the uh, uh, award winning voice acting. The aw- yes, which which th- I mean, this is pre YouTube. I don't know if you remember this. Yeah, the uh, the parody that somebody did where Ooh. they string together voice clips from. <laughs> That's Resident right. Evil. It's oh, called yeah. Resident Gigolo, and this is before YouTube. <laughs> I, remember well, that. I believe it is on YouTube. I'll link to oh, it. Oh, I'm sure it is now. Where yeah. they have, yeah, just uh, you know, it's all all the Chris all Redfield the, and <laughs> yeah, they 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 took a bunch of, of voice clips out of context and and stitched them together to make it sound like uh, like there were some uh, 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 dirty deeds that transpiring. Uh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Done dirt that, cheap. That that would be <laughs> uh, the second circle of hell. That would be second lust. One. That yeah. would be lust. There you go. Yes. So. Yeah, a uh, classic classic horror game and still one of my favorites to this day. Yeah, I, I think I like Resident Evil 2 a little more than the first one. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I do too, but... I mean... But know, the first the, one's a classic. The, but the, yeah, the first one is what kind of, kind of introduced that whole style of game it, it changed changed yeah. the way uh games are made you know at absolutely least in, in the horror the genre runner for so many other games exactly. uh, that are even on this list you know it's like, true <laughs> without without resident evil would we have some of these games that is very true yeah and now it's time for number four number four okay that's that's Who's- i, I I, I, well, I'm getting to it. Jeez, so impatient. Again, again, not a numbered list, not a ranked. So impatient. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to send you into the circle of hell. <laughs> I'm going to make a tenth circle. It's going to be called the chill out zone. And that's, <laughs> that's where I'm going to send you, CJ. I, I thank you. Straight I to the that. chill out that. zone where you can just relax for a minute. Okay. Jeez. Well, we're running a little bit long here. Yeah, you know what else is that's long? All. What? My my large intestines, which I pull out on a daily basis, and and choke the the, the people who are trapped in hell. I choke okay. them with my own intestines. <laughs> that's, seems dangerous. Well, I mean, it's hell. <laughs> okay. It's it's going to be gross and it's going to be dangerous. That's just, good. You know, yeah. try and steer clear if you don't want. <laughs> Devil intestines choking you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Personally, gotcha, I, gotcha. you know, I mm. welcome it. Come <laughs> one, come all. I got enough intestines for everyone. Okay. okay. CJ. Yeah? 
Number four is all you, dude. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Until Dawn for a second here. Oh, okay. Uh, which is, of course, I loved the VR game. Super massive uh, horror game mm-hmm. that uh, they did for Sony. It apparently started life as a PlayStation Three game uh, for the Move controller, actually, and then they uh, shifted it around. Um, but it is one of those games uh, that relies kind of heavily on quick time events and uh one of the one of the cool things about uh, some of the hor- more horrific scenes is that it brings up this don't move message on the screen and shows a little picture of the the light on the PS4 controller and uh wants you to keep oh, cool. that triangle in in uh the screen like as uh as uh steady as you can mm. um when you're trying to, when the char- main character is trying to hold their breath or uh, not be discovered by the killer in the game, but uh, basically, the the game starts off a bun- group of friends going on uh, a weekend trip to a cabin, and a prank is pulled on uh, one of the characters, and uh, she and her sister uh, go missing, are presumed dead. A year later. Uh, one of the one of the friends gathers everybody together to go back to the <laughs> the place where that oh. all happened, which is what great idea, dude. Yeah, it's just bring everybody back, but they all all do end up coming back, uh, and uh, bad things start happening to them. And there's a killer on the lo- on the loose, and mm. uh, the game itself you you can play it and try to save everybody or all of the characters can actually die in the course of uh gameplay yeah. but the game uses a sort of butterfly effect type thing where decisions that you make uh in the game can affect something that happens later can affect even what options you're given later so that uh no single playthrough is going to be exactly the same and uh it's just a really unique game, a unique experience that I think uh, people should play. And it's on sale mm. very often on the PlayStation <laughs> Store for dirt cheap. Like Dirty uh, Deeds. And Greg, I don't know if you have pl- ever played Until Dawn itself. I know you played Rush of Blood, the VR. No, I know. I've never played it. The VR thing. And they also did one, uh, a prequel in VR called The Inpatient. Um but the original game Until Dawn is on sale for like five bucks or less, like so often on the on PSN. Uh, but it's super worth playing. It has a uh, uh, a young Hollywood cast. You've got uh, Rami Malek in it, who of course is in Mr. Robot and uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. Yes, and uh, Hayden Panettiere is uh, in there as well from Heroes. That and- was played Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> no, in, no. Uh, in, no. In the, the that's Christensen. Uh, oh, oh, right? and until dawn's actually on uh, the PlayStation Hits label now too. So it is, yeah. So it's always super cheap, but even more so when it goes on sale. Hmm. Fifteen uh, bucks right now. But it's one of the one of the scariest games I think I've ever played. Uh, has plenty of jump scares. Uh, it does use quick time events, which I know a lot of people don't like, but in this context, it just works so well and some of them are pulled off so well that uh that yeah i think uh i think this is extremely worth playing and uh supermassive is unfortunately not doing another sequel to until dawn but they do have another sort of uh horror um genre game coming out here they're doing a dark pictures anthology series and the first one of those comes out uh, later this month called man of medan and I don't really know all that much about it, but it is a uh, very similar gameplay with the butterfly effect stuff, various decisions that you have to make, uh, very similar to Until Dawn. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Very cool. Okay. We're about to dive right into the top three most influential video games of all time. Uh, that no. As that's, that's not no. As determined... <laughs> By the readers of Electronic Gaming Monthly Magazine. I don't think they publish that anything f- in, anymore, either. Right? I, I don't know. I think they might, actually. I, well, wait, they? I, I yeah, it might just no. be a website. It might just be it's, a website these it's days. It's just a website, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah. I'll tell you what. I stopped reading that magazine 
when Trick Man Terry left. <laughs> That's a good time to stop reading. Yeah, yeah. I know. Because he's Trick nice, Man Terry's really, best. really nice guy. A like, genuinely nice guy. It's true. There's but you. before yeah. we dive into the top three, uh huh. Most uh uh the money making games of all time. Uh-huh. That's what no, this list is. No, the, that's the not top the list. earners. <laughs> scary scary, scary top, games. The the yes. The top grossing games of two thousand and nineteen. Before we move into that, I have one more message from one of my uh, devoted followers. Please okay. take a listen. We love you, do. Nobody loves you as much as you. Yo, what's up? CJ, Greg, Phil, Polly Shore here. If you don't believe it, I'm going to show you my body. Here we go. Got my fanny pack here. What's going on, dudes? I hope you guys are having a good one. Ooh, sexy, bro. Anyways, I'm in, uh, Virginia got your request um, and I got some information I want to say congratulations to your 666 episode prayer player on podcast one player no player one podcast sorry I apologize congratulations on your 666 episode on player one podcast you've been recording it for 13 years that's quite a feat as far as what's my favorite video game, hmm. I'd have to say uh, uh, Dungeons and Dragons. Is that a video game? The Wheeze doesn't play video games, bros. He plays with the sweet babes. Crusty beard. Anyways, I hope you guys are having a good one wherever you're at. It's hot as hell here. <coughs> Anyways, uh, CJ, Greg, Phil, what's up? Polly Shore here. Congrats on the 666 episode on the Player One podcast. 13 years. Here's 13 more years, dudes. Later, bros. Bye. <laughs> that, was, that was the best message what were that we could have gotten what? on a list of the scariest what? games. Did you expect another devil person? I another did. Another spooky person? Would you... Would you You've... think I could afford Elvira, Mistress <laughs> of the Dark? I yeah. reached out to her, but her people didn't get back to me. My expectations just went right out of the window. This this is great. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what you get. Anyway, let's move into the top three. And you know what I like about three? What's that? We're almost it's at one. Ha- we're almost <laughs> we're almost done with this. Ah, <laughs> uh, but not yet. My, uh, <coughs> jerkish jerk. Uh-huh. No, it's half a six. It's half a six. Oh, so right, 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 right. Three, three, three is, is half as evil as me, which is still pretty darn evil. My little, you know, so, so I'm, I'm the devil, right? I'm Satan. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. I'm Satan. And I, you know, six, 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 that's my number, the number sure. of the beast. Sure. Now. I get it. I got a little brother. I don't know if you know this. <laughs> they don't, you know, he's not in the books that much, but I got a little brother, my, uh-huh. little, my little Beazle buddy, and Beazle his, his, number, buddy. <laughs> his, his number, his, his number, he's number 333. So yeah, that's pretty good. if you're ever, if you're ever, uh, 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 drawing a pentagram and goat's blood on the ground and lighting some devil candles and you want to summon some evil. But you don't want the full devil experience. Mm. Yeah. Just uh, just just scroll the number three 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 in that goat's blood, and you'll get you'll get Kevin, who's my little brother. <laughs> Kevin. And he'll, okay. He'll come and and he'll darn you the heck. Okay. So yeah, he's a good kid. Okay. Can anyway, we move on? number. Th- well, I'm trying to, but now okay, you interrupted well, me, go and ahead. now I gotta hold, do a whole bit about how you're not being patient. <laughs> but you're you're this to, is you're torture. To, you're this starting torture. to wander off into like uh, Macho Man Randy Savage sound, sound like that. <laughs> it is kind of getting there. Oh, art thou bored? You you shouldn't be. I'm the devil. That's exciting. Yeah. Number three, Gregory. 
Wait, hold on a second. Here. Let me do Gregory. There, there we go. go. Hi. Um. So number three for me, I'm just gonna jump right into it. Is Alan Wake? Oh, uh, by Remedy. Alan Wake. Ah, there Just we go. Yes, a fantastic game that it's such a shame that we don't seem to be ever getting a sequel to. Mm. Uh, Although they did just purchase the rights back from Microsoft, and yeah, that uh, the might game. just be so they can release it everywhere else. <laughs> oh, well, that's probably <laughs> true, but you never know. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, story of a writer suffering from writer's block uh, yeah. in, in moving into a small town. I forget the name of it. Um. And just, it's, it's I, I guess the town's in hell or something, because it's just this, like, psychological thriller from start to finish. Wait, he, what town is he, it? I, I'm pretty familiar with hell. Uh, Willamette County. Oh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah Wait, yeah, yeah. no. No? That's, that's Dead Rising. Uh, oh, yeah, that's Dead Rising. Uh, Monsteropolis. There you go. Yeah, no, wait, that's, that's Mega Man. That's in the old Mega Man manual. That's a different one. Castlevania. That's, that's it. the one. That's, that's the, the one. one. Yep. Yeah. That's the one. That's the daddy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my, hang on a sec here. Oh boy. There we go. Oh jeez. Oh jeez. Yes. For uh, microphone keeps turning on. Um, oh jeez. <clears throat> keeps hearing about Alan Wake and yeah, it wants to play. It wants yeah. Alan Wake on the system. That's why. No, but uh, <laughs> so it's really cool because um, it's it's just the third person action game. Uh, but when you get into like actually fighting these shadow creatures, they're not Mm -hmm. monsters per se. Uh, it's all based on the use of light. So to make them uh, vulnerable, you need to flash uh, your flashlight at them. Um, like Luigi's mansion. Yeah, actually kind of like Luigi's mansion. Why isn't that game on this list? Why isn't that game on this list? (laughs) (laughs) Wait a second. Cause it's not demonic (laughs) enough. Last minute revision. 14 games. Well, how did, how did (laughs) people don't know that it's not on the list? You just gave it away. Damn it. Um, Spoiler alert. And the other amazing thing about this game was the way they handled it as a, an episodic game. I mean, it's all still on one yeah. disc, mm. but you are playing episodes of Alan Wake, and which gives them a chance to just use incredible music for like the credits of each episode. Yeah, um, nice. But yeah, it's just a fantastic game. And American Nightmare uh, was a, a downloadable only. Was American Nightmare? That's what it was, right? Yes, yeah, that mm-hmm. is correct. Alan Wake American Nightmare, which was a downloadable only pseudo sequel. sequel? Yeah, to the but game? the gameplay was a little bit different. They, you know, they kept the whole light thing, mm. but uh, it didn't have the chapter aspect. I don't no, think, and it was more, it was much more know. arcade style. Yeah, yeah, gameplay. But uh, something that desperately needs to come back. I do hope that they did yeah. buy it because they want to do something with that series. Because that my God, be, that was a good that'd game. Be good. Yeah, that it was would so be fun. pretty cool. Yeah. CJ was really into that too. Mike Phillips was really into that game. Yeah, he, yeah, he loved that game. He was the yeah. one I think who turned me on to it actually. I think it was in well, as we're recording this, it might still be free on the Epic Game Store. So if you don't have oh, it, oh yeah, that's right. right. Download yes. it. That's right. Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm sure it's ended by the time this episode comes out. Probably. But <laughs> let me tell you something. If I'm gonna use a game distribution service on the PC. <laughs> Oh no! Yo, you better believe it's gonna be the Epic Game Store. <laughs> it's not Steam. I, you got a lot of Steam down there in hell. I'm uh, sure. No, no, no. I oh. no, no, no. You guys can have your Steam. I'm gonna use the Epic Game Store. Okay. Yeah. I see. More industry commentary from our dark lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we needed. Yep. Stay timely. Is that all you had to say about That's all Alan I had to Wake? Say about it. Oh, I love it though. That was really, that was really good. Thanks. Hey, it's yeah. time for number two. And let me tell you. <laughs> oh no! And let me tell you. <laughs> if you're gonna be hanging out in hell, you're gonna be getting a lot of number two all over you. Just, just you're gonna <laughs> constantly. Be wait, you're gonna be wading yeah. through oceans of it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You're gonna have me dumping it into your mouth <laughs> out of my devil rectum. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah. This is a family show. Come on. Well, it was. It, it, it was. You, you, yeah. You brought on the devil. What did you uh. expect? I'm going to talk about my job. You yeah. know, my day to day operations. Some of that involves pooping in people's mouths. If it makes you feel any better, they're, they're sinners. <laughs> I mean, occasionally there's a clerical error and somebody slips down there that's not supposed to be there, but we try to minimize that. We try to minimize that. Okay, Mafia Devil. 
<laughs> Mafia devil. <laughs> hey, that's all. You know, after after uh, Satan leaves, you know, maybe six six seven, I can introduce. Uh, is, is, I mean, at this devil. point, is Satan ever going to leave? Devil. <laughs> I don't think so. I hope not. He's I keep great. hoping. He's great. I, I hope keep he comes hoping back. that he'll shorten things up a little bit here. He doesn't I, seem I, to be uh, getting the the message. <laughs> <laughs> Although I'm worried, we're running a little long. I'm worried. Well, this is it's a special episode. I guess so. It's our final episode. Come on, cut yeah, us some I know, slack. I know. I know. Uh, I'm I'm worried that that. Uh, Mafia Devil might uh, might clash with uh, Turbo Graphics loving Mafia guy. So, ah, you know that's we too we, bad. we got it. We can't have that many Mafia characters on our show. That's true. Yeah, but like I was saying, number two, it's all you, Phil. When I think of number two, when I think <laughs> of a big pile of number two, let me tell you who I think of first, Phil. Thank you, thank you, Devil. Uh, uh hmm. my number two game of all time. Wait, that's not what this list is, what? though. But he kept no. saying, uh, but he was wrong. The uh, devil was uh, wrong. Uh, I've sown confusion amongst their ranks. <laughs> <laughs> They're fighting amongst themselves. The end is nigh. Yes, true. We are on number two, so Man. we're almost done. We are on number two. It's we're we're we're, we're hitting the finish line here. Uh, yeah. my number two. Spooky game, devil game, whatever. I don't, I don't, it's a, a poorly planned episode. True. Uh, uh, Telltale Games. Remember, remember those guys? Yep. Yes, vaguely. That they, they, they used to be a video game company. Uh, back, back in the 2012s, they made a game called The Walking Dead Season 1. Was it only, was it two, 20, was it just uh, 2012? What is it that reason? Yeah, uh, yeah well, they I mean, were that's, very yeah. they were a very prolific studio there yeah. for a while. I mean, that's that's still seven yeah. years ago. I yeah. guess you're right. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's, tw- it's 2019, my dude. Uh, pff, yeah, but uh, yeah, w- uh, Walking Dead season one came out, and we all played it. We sure did. We all loved it. Absolutely, we did. We did. I think we did a spoiler cast on yeah, it, didn't we? We, we did. I'm, I'm pretty sure we or, did a spoiler cast. Or I think on. we did several. That we then like Voltroned up into. I believe we uh, did. Is that what uh, it was? Yeah. An yeah. episode. Yeah, that's we did right. One that's for each right. part. And um, it was a really good game. It was a fantastic uh, it was game. So good. It was. Um, yeah. You know, it, well, I mean the the previous the previous Telltale games that had come out had been more uh, in the lines of like the old Lucas Arts games, you know, where you're collecting right. items and. Because they did like the Sam and Max games and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but this was the the first game that they did that was just kind of a you know watching a story and sort of choosing dialogue tree branches and then the story would split off from there uh, based yep. on the decisions you made. And it was a really effective uh, way of of doing the storytelling uh, for that game. And if for better or for worse, it it ended up kind of being the model that they adopted for pretty much every Everything. game they put out until they until they closed shop. Right. Um, but another a licensed game that yeah. uh, you know didn't exactly take the comic books and make them into a video game. It was you know right, a, right. It, it, a, it, a new story set in the world of yeah, the comic yeah, books. Yeah, it, it was it was not directly based on the comics it was not directly based on the tv show yep uh, i believe wasn't uh, the character glenn was in the like the first couple episodes of that game right i think there if were I, some he yeah. was, I remember yes, he was in, yeah. in that season at least yeah yeah, yeah because i remember people telling me about that because i did not watch the show so right. people were well, talking I mean, about the, how there was that connection i mean but this this is yeah. uh I, I believe the the Glenn, the version of Glenn in the game is supposed to be the comic book version of Glenn. Oh, okay, well, yeah. like yeah, yeah, yeah. either way, because yeah, because those those are completely like the the, I mean the 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 TV show which I've not actually seen. Mm-hmm. I, I've read a, a yeah. good chunk of the comics, um, and the TV show is certainly inspired by the comics, but they are separate stories separate things, and and yeah. characters you know, have different motivations and different fates and stuff like that. But right. I believe that Glenn shows up in the video game and then he ends up leaving. And then, you know, his story continues in the comic books. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, but you are introduced. You you know have, you have new protagonists. Um, you know, Clementine, of course, uh, the young girl, and uh, Lee, who is uh, the player's character, mm-hmm. and uh, two two outstanding characters, two really really well written, uh, really just uh, likable characters, and uh, yeah, and they're put in these kind of horrible situations, and you're kind of uh, tasked with trying to get them through it and making the right decisions and, you know, kind of, you know, kind of tying in uh, CJ with uh, your dead rising mm-hmm. where you can't save everybody. Right. Yeah. Certainly that game, you had to make some kind of tough decisions on the yeah. fly. You usually have like, you know, quick, you have three seconds, which character are you going to, one person's going to get saved. One person's going to die horribly quick decide. Right. And then the huh. game kind of branches off and you have to f- sort of face the consequences of it. And they definitely put you in a lot of situations where there was no right answer. Of course. And that's and that's yeah. that was kind of the beauty of that game yeah. and the way it was written. Mm. And yeah, really effective, uh creepy, unnerving, super emotional moments. Very emotional moments. Uh certainly the ending is is uh kind of heart-wrenching. Yeah, and even yeah. even besides that, I mean they they I forget the name of the character. There's one character in particular who the way they write his personality, he's just very off-putting from the start. Yeah, and yep. but there's a he's got a wife and kid. Is this? Are you thinking of Kenny? Yeah, it's Kenny, the the redneck guy. And they masterfully make you empathize with him. Oh yeah, based on later what on what happens to him in the story. Which I yeah, even though yeah. you know we're talking about a game that's eight years old or something like that, I won't give it away. But um, like. I was really taken aback by that because not that there hadn't been good writing in video games up until that point. Of course. Yeah. But there were moments in that game where I was just like, whoa. Like I, right. I just was not prepared for that. And they and they developed those characters so well right from the mm-hmm. start. Yeah. That uh, you know, you, you, you and to get you empathize empathizing with a character who you kind of looked at like as a rival, as somebody that this guy's gonna break and shoot us like he's gonna he's gonna right yeah he's a terrible person yeah Mm -hmm. um just brilliant really you really don't like kenny yeah at first and yeah by the end of the game you want to give him a hug (laughs) yeah you're like oh kenny's great and and uh and i'm 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 gonna spoil a little bit of season two just to lay out i mean again this game is is you know old old at this point but uh at one point in uh, the second game in the second season, Kenny shows up again. Yes. And right. it's like, and again, for a, a character that you really, really kind of didn't like when he was introduced, when he shows up again in season two, you're like, oh, thank God yeah. Kenny's here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Things absolutely. are going to be okay now. Kenny's Kenny's here. We can do this. And mm-hmm. yeah. And, and you know, we talked about this on the show before. Season two was was good. Uh, but sure. certainly did not reach the heights that season one reached. No, it didn't, it didn't no. punch you in the gut like season one did. Yeah, and and I guess it's kind of damning to season two in that I ended up not playing any of the subsequent Walking Dead games. Same here. I, I should yeah. go. I mean, they're they're re-releasing. They're doing a collection of all of them. Uh, yeah, so I might go Switch back too. Right? Yeah, I might go back and here. and and plow through all of them, but. Uh, but man, that first one, that first one hit hard and I think it took everyone by surprise how how engrossing it was. Mm-hmm. And yeah, still one of my favorite kind of spooky uh scary games. Very nice. So there you go. Hmm. Well, that was lovely. And now it is time. We're at the end of the road finally. Yeah, Save. everyone Everyone has had their chance to talk about <laughs> four games. <laughs> We've got 12 games. It's all nice and even. But you know yeah. what? You know who hates fair play? Who? What? Who's, who's got a pointy tail and hates fair play? This guy. <laughs> oh, all right. Satan, all right. Satan himself. You know what? Yeah. CJ, I'm going to give you another chance. Okay. I'll take it. Because you deserve it for putting up with me all this time. (laughs) This nearly two hours. And spoiler alert, pretty much for the rest of the eternity, (laughs) once you kick it. 
<laughs> You're on the list, buddy. Oh, man. VIP section, just for you. Oh, VIP section. That's got to be good, right? <laughs> Not really. Okay. No, no. That stands oh. for, that stands for uh, very intrusive poop. <laughs> it kind of ties back <sighs> to my number two story. <laughs> You're not going to like it. Oh, no. You're not going to oh, like it. Oh. But I'm going to have a blast. Okay. Big okay. blast of poop coming out of my devil butt. So I guess we have one, one more game to talk about then. Why don't you tell us the number one most not influential number one, no. game no. of all time? I know this is, I'm going to spoil a little bit. This is my favorite NES game. <laughs> Not a sequential so, list. Go first ahead. First of all, the top top game, the spookiest game ever made. I don't know if I would call it that, but it's, uh, it's ranked it's number one. It must certainly be. a horrific uh, game and one of my favorites for sure. Uh, I'm talking about the Friday the Thirteenth, the game. Oh, that came out in 2017. Yes. Uh, for for everything for your PlayStation Four, for your Xbox One, for your PC, uh, and actually this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's out for the Nintendo Switch. So you can play it on everything. Wow. And in that... fact, I was able to get an early code for the Nintendo Switch version. So I've I've recently dipped back into oh my. Friday the 13th uh due to that. Is is the um is is the is is this game crossplay enabled? It is unfortunately not crossplay oh, enabled. No. Uh, which which would have been good. While I have the review code, there's nobody online play, playing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, so <laughs> that's that's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So most of my games have been uh, with the offline bots. Actually, when so when the game came out in 2017, it was online only. Only had a few maps, uh, and ha- they had a lot of technical problems mm. uh, with the game as well. But over the last uh, two years, they have been able to add things to the game. Uh, up until a point, because there was a lawsuit that uh, around the rights for the Friday the Thirteenth series that that at a certain point prevented them from making any content updates to the game. Oh, but, right. But uh, they can still do bug fixes and stuff like that. So uh, the Switch version is all of uh, all of those updates and all of the DLC packs that they've released. They've released uh, Counselor. Uh, cosmetics so you can dress your mm. counselors up they've released uh new jasons and new jason kills uh, that are all in the switch version but uh, if you've not played it it is an online mainly an online multiplayer asymmetrical uh game where jason Voorhees, the main character in the friday the 13th <laughs> movie uh would you say he's the main character i don't know maybe maybe it's the various uh, people who get he, killed he is he is yeah, the, he's uh, the character that holds the whole thing together he's the, the main the main antagonist antagonist let's say. yeah yeah you uh one side one player plays as jason and the other seven players in the game play as counselors and uh the counselors try to escape jason's clutches and jason tries to kill them all in the 20 minute matches uh mm. that uh the the 20 minute game time so anything can happen in that 20 minutes like <laughs> and the, it usually the, does and it usually does one of the things i i love about the game so much is just is playing with especially with friends because mm-hmm. the game is a hoot and a holler uh with people that you know um the counselor is trying to escape you can do various things like uh you have to find the car battery the keys and gasoline to gas up uh, car and drive uh, out off the map Ooh. or you can get a propeller and some gasoline and uh, take a boat and escape uh, you can call the cops uh, or you can just survive for 20 minutes mm. if uh, if that's your thing um, but I just find the game to be super super fun and since they released it they've put out more maps now there's a total of eight uh, five of which are are real maps, and then there's three that are smaller versions of some of the existing maps uh, in mm. the game. And it's just fun. Some of the most fun I've had online with friends has been in Friday the 13th, the game. Like, especially as Jason, like trying to prevent people from escaping, <laughs> trying to <laughs> like hunt them down and uh, smash them with an axe or uh, do one of the various uh, very gruesome kills that Jason they has in the game. Oh, yeah. uh, it's just a, a load of fun. It's a very atmospheric game and uh, 
on the Switch, you could potentially play it locally, although you have to use online. There's no local mode, unfortunately, mm. but um, you can play it in close proximity with others online and uh, have a completely awesome campfire experience. <laughs> nice. With it, yeah. Um, is is can, is Jason X in this game? Jason X is not in the game. Oh. Sadly, so uh, the lawsuit on the uh, Friday the 13th game rights or yeah. the property rights uh, unfortunately happened right as they were doing Jason X stuff oh, for the game. No. So that un- unfortunately didn't make it in That's before a shame. they had to stop. But, uh, but that would have been great because actually... Yeah. I, I think Jason X is the only Friday the 13th movie I had seen before playing the game. Really? I guess yeah, Freddy vs. Jason, I saw that away. too. But uh, Jason X, I think, is the only one that I'd seen. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Uh, but I love the game. I never played the NES game. But uh, the NES game is not very good. I've heard the that. The game is yeah. great. <laughs> I've, I've heard that. Oh, it's a, it's an acclaim LJN game, right? Or exactly. LJN? Yeah. Um, but there is a Jason Voorhees skin for the part three Jason in this game that turns Jason purple, which I believe oh, is the, the sprite. That's an NES and, homage to be sure. NES homage. And uh, there's 8-bit music or like chiptune music that plays as Jason is uh, approaching you oh, uh, in the game. So That's wonderful. But uh, the game is it's just a ton of fun, it, lovingly crafted by people who love Friday the 13th and uh, has a lot of cool details from the movies, because I have seen the movies uh, now, thanks now. to uh, Mr. Paul Mattingly, uh, in <laughs> fact. And now there's a guy who's right at the top of my list <laughs> of awesome dudes. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But it's coming out on Switch, so hopefully uh, we'll get renewed interest in it. But uh, and it was it was free on PlayStation Plus last mm-hmm. year, and it's been available for cheap uh, on occasion. But I definitely suggest giving it a try because it's one of the most uh, unique game experiences I've had online. Very nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. Phil, I don't think you've played it. I know Greg has. Oh, I have I played not played it. it. I, I have not had a chance to play it. it. That's the thing, though. You can be a, you can be a terrible Jason or a terrible counselor and still just have a a really fun time with the game. Wasn't isn't Jason always terrible though? I mean, he's he's a murderer. I mean, he is, I yeah. Mean, yeah, but you he's can a be a poor person. you can be a poor murderer. Can you be at like <laughs> like would <laughs> you can would be that bad mean he's at murdering? Like, like he's helpful then? Like does he go around like doing charitable uh, services? You know, like outreach no, but programs on occasion, and stuff? on occasion, you will find a Jason that is in cahoots with a counselor. What? That does happen. Yeah. That way the counselor is it, wins. Is this like a... Is this like a, a this sneaky... This is like a cheating thing, yeah. Yeah, like 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 two buddies are like, yep. you be a counselor, I'll be Jason, and I'll kill everyone but you. Exactly, kind of thing. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's or stuff. while playing, it's always fun when people attempt to appeal to jason and be like no 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 don't kill me i'll <laughs> i'll tell you where everybody else is <laughs> which does does happen does it ever yes. does does it ever work have you seen that work i have not seen it work no certainly not when i've been playing no because you know it, it, especially if when i'm jason no if if you're actually role-playing if you're sticking to like the fiction of the the universe <laughs> i don't think that would work i don't think that would work either no. we should go back yeah. We should go back and, and ask Kane Hodder if uh, if if Jason would ever accept a bargain. I don't. Th- I think he would agree that Jason would not. Yeah, I don't think he would either. Yeah, that doesn't sound. Yeah. That doesn't sound like the Jason Voorhees I know. True. So, and that's our uh, that's our list of thirteen, uh, the 13 horrific best games. games of all time. No, 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 no. not <laughs> not what we were going for. A solid nope. list from hell. <laughs> Not at all what we were going for. Yes. The devil approves of this list of games. Let your underage children play all of them. (laughs) All righty, and that is our show for this week. Thank you uh, very much for listening. If you have a question for us or would like to comment on something you heard, you can direct that 
to at P1 Podcast on the Twitters, or you can go to our internet website at playeronepodcast.com. There you'll find our contact information. You will find blog entries about horrifying Sega CD games from <laughs> Mr. Greg Seward. Uh, yes, especially the full motion uh, video ones. Especially those ones, yes. You will f- also find blood curdling Generation Ooh. 16 episodes. About cute little uh, blue birds. Blickies, they're called, I believe. You got yes. that right. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. (laughs) And on our website as well, you'll find show notes and links to all the things that we talked about on this episode. It's really just going to be like a list. Yeah. The games. Although maybe I don't want to spoil it for people who haven't listened. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing there. But anyway, uh, it's also got a link to our Discord server where you can go and discuss this episode. Uh, discuss discuss your favorite spooktacular video games yeah. uh, with us and our other listeners. You can also discuss your love of the devil and all his devilish ways. If you would like to subscribe to the Player One Podcast, you can do so by visiting playeronepodcast.com or by going to the uh, Apple uh, Podcast application. You can also head over to the uh, Apple App Store and invest $1.99. Cheap. Cheap. The, the, the devil's gonna get to say cheap too. <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to invest in the uh, Player One Podcast iPhone application it gives you one touch communication with us via the emails, the Twitters, the the devil's summoning ceremonies, the what have yous. You also have all of our episodes ready to stream right to your listening device and hey android cell phone telephone users the player one podcast iphone application is available for your listening device as well from that same dollar 99 also cheap i thought i would i thought you were going to try and do it i thought I'd, I'd, I'd said it really fast thank you greg you're a good you're a good <laughs> you're a good host greg thank you the devil approves of you <laughs> oh, oh no yeah i'm not yeah. sure I'm not sure how to take that put that on your resume approved by the devil <laughs> Hire me. Man. It's a solid endorsement, Greg. Congratulations. Uh-huh. <laughs> um uh the that that that's right over there at the Amazon Android Marketplace. We're also on Stitcher Radio. You can like us on Facebook. We're on Spotify. Uh and uh I don't know what's going on with the YouTube. This episode's not not live. No. We you know what we tried? We tried to to stream this live. But uh, uh, the image of Satan uh, started causing uh, started started causing servers to melt. That's right, and and we uh, couldn't do it. Yeah, pe- like people's eyes started to bleed, so we <laughs> had to to do this one audio only. But mm. uh, we we tried to stream on YouTube. We were trying to figure it out. Google Hangouts just got shut down. So you know what? Follow our Twitter account at P One Podcast, and we'll tell you what's up. Uh, with our next live shows, but you can go to youtubes.com slash P one podcast and, and watch uh, video archives of a ton of our old episodes. So please, True. please enjoy that. If that's a thing you want to do. And you know what, if you'd like what you've heard and how could you, and how could you, you can head over to patreoncom slash P one podcast, throw a few shekels our way. CJ yeah. needs to buy a whole lot of holy water. To, it's true uh, now. to yeah. to to cleanse our microphones and our computers yes. after uh after the the coming of our dark lord yes. uh old scratch himself so please give early give often and uh you know what if you are a five dollar uh patreon supporter you do get access to a special uh post show are we doing one this week this episode went yeah. really long are we doing yeah. i guess we're doing yeah, one we this started week? soon we're gonna start it soon. Yeah. Uh, special, special p- uh, bonus uh, after show every week where we have fun. We tell jokes. We play games. It's and this a one is a uh, old devilish. Time. Oh, it's six 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 related. Oh, am I, am I on this one? Yep. Oh, yep. oh, I hope you like long droning monologues. Then mm-hmm. <laughs> shake your head, Greg. I've made this show. Your own personal. We, uh, we won't do the devil voice in uh, the after show, though. Not, not doing a, it. It's not, a, not, a, it's not a voice. I mean, he won't has, be on the after show. 
But you just said I would. <laughs> no. You're the true no. devil. No, I CJ. don't want to have to edit two episodes. You're the true <laughs> devil here. <laughs> well, that'll that'll teach him yeah. to uh, to waste all of our time. Waste all of our time, Greg. I'm just as mad as you, Greg. I hope you know. Um, but yes, join us, uh, Patreon friends. Uh, we do appreciate uh, all of your uh, wonderful support getting us through uh, these hellish uh, 666 episodes. Uh, nice. CJ. Yeah. Huh? Thank you so much. Thank you, Phil, for all of this. Uh, gr- ooh, 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 ooh. Gregory. There we go. Yo. Thank you so much. Thank you, Phil. And of course, a wonderful, uh, uh, kind and caring and eternally damning thanks to uh, this week's special guest, uh, our Lord Satan himself. It was very nice to be here. I appreciate it. You know, I usually have to lurk in the backgrounds of these video game podcasts. No one ever really calls yeah. me out, but it's nice. Well, not many to of them see. have gotten to 666 episodes, so maybe you'll have to make an appearance on on those. Uh, F those <clears throat> guys. I don't. I, I only care about you. Not you gaming Steve. Podcast. Is gaming Steve down there? <laughs> oh jeez. Oh, 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 yeah, oh, CJ throwing Steve. some old shade. Yeah. <laughs> You bet gaming Steve's down here. He is in uh he's in Which greed. Circle? He's in greed. Okay. He's in circle four because he was was too greedy going for podcast listeners and he failed. Uh. He failed. <laughs> oh. Where where the player one podcast succeeds, gaming Steve has failed and now he suffers for eternity for okay. his misdeeds. I see. But thank you very much for having me, and I hope to see all of you in the fiery pits soon. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm the devil. Wow, there we go. So, uh, and thank you, thank you, of course, to our wonderful listeners yes. as well. And we will uh, see you on the other side. Yes, six, six, seven. the other side of six six six. Yeah, six 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 seven. <laughs> yeah, we're on our way. Toodles. Bye, Bye everybody.